Is Ozempic too good to be true? You see it all over the media these days. Celebrities endorsing this as a weight loss miracle and the holy grail for weight loss. But as with all things, there are pros and cons that you should be aware of before you decide to use a medication like this. And as a physician who has personally prescribed this to many of my patients and seen firsthand the effects and the results, I wanted to tell you everything you need to know, both good and bad, so that you know the truth about Ozempic. Let's start with the background of how Ozempic and Wagovi were developed and how they actually work to cause weight loss in patients. This is a really nice diagram that shows how this class of drugs called GLP-1 agonists has been really in development for quite some time now with the first drug being FDA approved in 2005 and then subsequently Ozempic approved for type 2 diabetes in 2017 and then Sixenda and Wigovi in 2020 and 2021 were approved respectively for treatment of obesity. Now, the process of actually going through uh, and developing these medications is a very, very actually quite involved process. And you can see even all the way back in 1906, there were some kind of developments in this field that have led to uh, the development of these drugs that we know today. So why have medications like Ozempic and Wigovi exploded in popularity over the last few years? Uh, and it's because of trials and studies like this one. And this is from the Wigovi website itself. But you can see that uh, here is a graph of the change in body weight, and patients who received placebo only had a 2.4% reduction in their weight with a reduced calorie diet and increased physical activity, whereas the patients taking Wagovi had a nearly 15% reduction in their body weight at 68 weeks. In terms of how many patients achieved these weight loss goals, you can see that 83% of patients achieved at least a 5% loss in body weight, 66% achieved more than 10% loss, and then 47.9% of patients achieved more than 15% percent weight loss. For those of you who are interested, here's actually the 2021 New England Journal of Medicine article uh, detailing these results. And I found it kind of funny. I just noticed that this was for the step one study group. So uh, these people definitely kind of triggering second year medical students with that study group name. <laughs> so how exactly does this class of medication produce such profound weight loss in patients? This is a great little diagram that I found that shows that primarily, uh, in my opinion, the biggest effect is in the stomach where you have delayed gastric emptying. So patients have a much earlier satiety signal and they feel more full much more quickly. But you also have a lot of downstream effects on the pancreas, on the brain, and in the liver that all produce uh, the weight loss effect. I also briefly wanted to go over all the various types of GLP-1 agonists that are now out there on the market because it may be a little bit confusing. Uh, but here you can see Ozempic, you can see Wagovi, and Sixenda. So most of these are only approved for patients with type 2 diabetes, including Ozempic. So if you use Ozempic for weight loss, that's actually uh, an off-label use for this medication. You can see that all of these medications are injections, except for Rebelsis, which is a once-daily pill. And then the biggest difference between uh, medications like Trulicity and Ozempic compared to Victoza is that these are once-weekly injections instead of once-daily injections. But really, the only two that are approved for weight loss are Wigovi and Sixenda. So as you may already know, the generic name for Wigovi and Ozempic is semaglutide. And I wanted to touch briefly about the different dosing regimens based on whether you're taking it for diabetes or weight management. So for diabetes, we actually start with a low dose of 0.25 milligrams uh, once a week for four weeks. And then we slowly up titrate that up to a maximum of two milligrams per week. In contrast, for weight loss, where you're using Wigovi, uh, this is going to be uh, starting again at a low dose if possible. And the reason we start with that low dose is to minimize the development of significant side effects. And then one of the things I wanted to point out is that there is a higher end dose uh, for Wagovi, which is 2.4 milligrams once weekly, as opposed to 2 milligrams weekly for Ozempic. And in order to maximize the amount of weight loss you are getting, it really is recommended to get to these high doses because we really don't see as strong, strong of an effect with the lower doses. So who, in fact, is indicated to receive a weight loss medication such as Wegovy? Here I want to point out that the official indications are for patients with a BMI of greater than 30 or in patients with a BMI greater than 27 and at least one weight-associated comorbidity, like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. I really wanted to emphasize this because there are a lot of patients who are seeking to use these uh, medications when they do not meet these criteria. And in that case, you'd really be putting yourself at risk for serious adverse events because we just haven't done the studies on those patients. And if you're only BMI of 24 to 27, you're overweight, but really with just lifestyle modifications and exercise, you should be able to reach your goal. So I definitely want to precaution patients who do not meet these 
these criteria uh, from starting to use Wagovi. All right, now let's talk about side effects because this is, I think, the most important thing that you will need to know before deciding whether to start Ozempic or not. So what are some of the side effects that you should counsel patients on before they start Ozempic? In my experience, basically 100% of the patients that I prescribe this drug to have said, yeah, I feel full very, very early, but also that sense of fullness is not just fullness. I actually feel actively nauseous. And uh, that's a very uncomfortable feeling, of course, right? Now, if we go back to the New England Journal of Medicine article, you can actually see table three, where they list out all of the reported side effects that the patients reported. And you can see that 89.7% of patients reported any uh, adverse event. 44% reported nausea, 31% uh, with diarrhea, 24.8% had uh, vomiting. So these are extremely, extremely common with these uh, medications to the point where I wouldn't even say it's a potential side effect. If I was counseling a patient, I would basically say you are almost certain to experience one of these side effects. For the two months Carrie Yazid took Ozempic, the drug worked as intended. Yazid has type 2 diabetes and the weekly injection lowered her blood sugar levels, but it also brought side effects she considered unbearable, including vomiting, fatigue, headaches, and stomach cramps. Five weeks into taking the medication, she said she found herself unable to move off the bathroom floor. I had vomited so much that I didn't have the energy to get up and I was basically lying in it, she said. I couldn't even raise my head to vomit in the commode. It was so bad. However, for many patients, there is a risk and benefit bit ratio where, you know, they, the desire to lose weight is so strong that having uh, that nausea and vomiting is you know worth the cost. And this is especially true because significant weight loss is associated with uh, a lot of decreased risks in various domains in the patient's health. So uh, any other diseases that are comorbid with obesity, by fixing the obesity, you are reducing, reducing their risk for many, many other diseases. So in that case, the trade-off may be worth it. There are a couple things, however, that you really should be warning patients about as well, because uh, you know some people just say nausea, vomiting, that's not really such a big deal, but there are some that are a little bit more scary that they should also be aware about. And so here's one, GLP-1 receptor agonist and the risk of thyroid cancer. Um, in the current study, we found increased risk of all thyroid cancer and medullary thyroid cancer with the use of GLP-1 receptor agonists, in particular after one to three years of treatment. Now, I will say that this is a very, very rare uh, side effect that should be expected, but in patients with a history of thyroid cancer or a family history of thyroid cancer, I would pretty strongly recommend them against using GLP uh, receptor agonists because of this data. You can see that the FDA took this seriously enough that they actually issued a black box warning for the risk of thyroid C-cell tumors, which was in rodents determined to have dose-dependent and treatment duration-dependent thyroid C-cell tumors at clinically relevant exposures. Now, they say that there's not enough data in humans to suggest that there's the same association. However, with that article that I just linked, it appears there is a small link as well. Therefore, semaglutide is contraindicated in patients with a personal or family history of, thyroid, of medullary thyroid carcinoma or in patients with multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, MEN2. Counsel patients regarding the potential risk for medullary thyroid carcinoma with the use of semaglutide and inform them of the symptoms of thyroid tumors, for example, a mass in the neck, dysphagia, dyspnea, and persistent hoarseness. Besides the risk for thyroid C-cell tumors, another important adverse event that could be very serious uh, for patients to know about is pancreatitis. And this is a very well-known association that anybody who's prescribing GLP-1 agonists should be aware about. Acute pancreatitis has been uh, reported in associa association with GLP-1 receptor agonist treatment, and therefore patients who have had a history of pancreatitis are generally contraindicated to receive medications like Ozempic and Wagovi. Another really important caveat that patients need to be aware about too is that potentially when they start Ozempic and Wago or Wagovi, it needs to be thought of as a lifelong medication. This is not something that they should just take for a couple weeks and then slim down for a wedding and then they can stop it and they're going to keep that weight off. Many, many studies have suggested that there is rebound uh, weight gain after stopping uh, Ozempic or Wagovi. And so patients really need to be continued on it for long term. So if you're somebody who's not fond of the idea of taking a medication for the rest of your life, you really need to be aware of this. Patients who stop taking the drugs often regain weight. Like many drugs, the effects of semaglutide stop when patients go off of it, so some people regain weight. Experts said they consider Ozempic and Wagovi to be lifelong medications. Here you can see the data from the Wagovi website itself. And in this purple line, these are patients who continued taking Wagovi. And then the gray line is patients who were switched to placebo at 20 weeks. And you can see that a significant amount of the weight that they lost 
uh, kind of went back uh, up towards their baseline. And, you know, we didn't trend, they didn't trend it out further than 68 weeks, but theoretically, this might have even approached back to their baseline weight all the way. This is another article that states that most people regain weight after stopping Wigovi. One study looked at people a year after stopping semaglutide and lifestyle intervention, which consisted of diet counseling every four weeks and 150 minutes of physical activity per week. The study showed that they regained two thirds of the weight that they lost on the drug. And here's the graphs showing that. So this is over the course of 120 weeks. You can see that while they were on semaglutide, they had a really, really sharp decrease in their body weight, which was fantastic, but really quickly rebounded as soon as they stopped taking uh, the medication. Medication. Again, we don't know if they had trended this out further than 120 months, if they would have just continued trending up to their baseline weight. Another consideration you may have heard about is ozempic face. Now, this is due to rapid weight loss, especially in areas of the face, which tend to cause a kind of sagging or drooping or kind of a gaunt appearance that people have reported after using Ozempic. Ozempic face refers to the facial changes that patients who've lost a significant amount of weight sometimes experience, primarily a loss of facial fat that can leave the face sagging and looking older. It's especially common in middle-aged and older patients. And if you just Google Ozempic face, you can see some of these examples. So you can see here when she's at a heavier weight, her face is a little bit more plump, uh, but then when she has lost weight, uh, it's a little bit more saggy, uh, saggy appearing. In my opinion, this may just be because of how quickly the weight loss is occurring. And if you give the body a little bit more time, then it's going to kind of restore that fullness uh, to the face. But, but obviously, if you're losing a ton of weight, you're going to be losing it from everywhere in your body, including your face. And I wouldn't be surprised if this photo that was taken here was just a result of poor lighting conditions. And, you know, maybe she was a little sleepy that day, too. Here's another example here where the patient reported uh, having this ozempic face afterwards. And then after full face correction and balancing after weight loss, she kind of restored uh, her normal appearance. Obviously, this one has better lighting. She's also wearing makeup. So of course, when you're losing a significant amount of weight, your face is going to look different. But this is something to be aware of just so you're not surprised by it if it happens. And then finally, most recently, I've been noticing a lot more videos from anesthesiologists and surgeons who have concerns before surgeries when taking uh, Wagovi and Ozempic, uh, mainly because of that delayed gastric emptying. You know, for uh, surgeries, we want patients to be fasted so that there is less risk for them to have an aspiration event where stomach contents go up and go down into their airways. Now, if you have delayed gastric emptying, Maybe fasting for eight hours, you know, the midnight before your surgery is not sufficient for all of that food in your stomach to actually exit and, and make sure you decrease that aspiration risk. So there is a significant concern before surgeries uh, regarding this new medication as well. Finally, the last thing I want patients and providers to know is that patients taking these medications off label is going to be extremely costly. And again, it's going to have to be a cost benefit analysis by the patient of whether it may be worth it for them to spend in excess of $900 or $1,000 per month in order to have that weight loss. So you can see that off label use of Ozempic generally Generally, it's costing around $936. Um, in this article here, we see that uh, it's about $892 a month. And I've seen quotes up to $1,200 a month as well. One thing to consider is, you know, taking a, a daily walk for 30 minutes and then cutting down on calories. That's free. Whereas spending $1,000 a month is not accessible for a lot of patients. And finally, one last controversy that I want to say about Ozempic is that there is such a high demand for Ozempic and Wagovi that there's actually developed significant shortages for people who really truly do need these medications. And so uh, that's one of the downsides of us giving so much off-label use of these medications. I have a patient that we started Ozempic on, and typically you expect about a 1% decrease in the patient's A1C after starting it, but their A1C actually went from 12.3% to 6.9%. And when I think of the benefits that that patient got, I feel like it really would have been a huge shame if that patient had not been able to get Ozempic because of the shortages. And then, so that's another thing to keep in mind uh, when prescribing these medications. So finally, after all of this data and discussion, what is my final take on Ozempic and Wagovi? Should you take it? Is it really as good as, as, as it sounds? And the answer is... Uh, a little nuanced, but the answer is yes, it really is that good. It is able to cause so much weight loss. The studies are 
repeatedly showing significant amounts of weight loss. And it is also showing, in my experience, a significant reduction in the patient's A1C if they have diabetes. The problem is there are many things that should be taken into consideration before taking these medications, uh, especially the risk of thyroid C-cell tumors, pancreatitis, and also the almost inevitable GI side effects that patients are going to have, which they're going to have to weigh against the benefits of taking a medication like this for weight loss. And finally, most importantly, patients are going to need to know that if they're taking this medication, it is almost certainly going to be a long-term medication for them, not something that they can take just briefly for quick little stints here, here and there, because the effects of yo-yo dieting, where your weight fluctuates up and down, are known to be very detrimental to your health. And so we really want to avoid having that yo-yo effect. You really need to be taking this medication long-term and consistently if you want to have success. Again, my first line recommendation for all patients is going to be lifestyle modification and lifestyle interventions. For example, getting that 100 50 minutes uh, a week of exercise and eating a more balanced diet with calorie reduction, that's really going to be the best way for you to get in charge of your health and your weight without experiencing or being at risk for all those side effects that I discussed previously. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something. Please leave a comment down below with your experience with Ozempic. And if you have any comments or questions, I'll be sure to answer them as well. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video and peace.